St. Roche, Quarantine File 4. The second alert was issued on January 11, 1998, at 8.15 p.m. on all channels in southeast Louisiana. It premiered 24 hours after the first was broadcasted. The alert followed the previous video until it was later updated. Regional Alert 2. Primary Entry Point System issued an emergency action notification. Alert. A dangerous pathogen has been identified in St. Roche and the surrounding areas. Any and all precautions are advised. The situation is ongoing, and the public will be updated as new information is learned. Residents inside the town of St. Roche and the surrounding communities are under a mandatory quarantine. Anyone breaking the quarantine will be arrested. Anyone believed to be infected will be executed on site. Do not leave your home until military personnel can escort you to safety. Repeat, do not leave your home until military personnel can escort you to safety. It is vital that the infection be avoided at all costs. The pathogen is believed to be highly contagious. Infected individuals can be identified by open sores found all over the body. Transmission from the pathogen is delivered through a white mucus secreted from the sores. Symptoms of the itch. 1. Cysts develop on the skin between 3 to 4 hours. 2. Cysts open within 4 to 5 hours. 3. Infected will develop a severe itchy sensation. 4. Infected will try to feed the open sores blood and fluid to stop the itchy sensation. Warning. Do not go near the infected dead. They are still highly infectious and extremely dangerous. An infected corpse still secretes the infectious mucus. Some reports have indicated that an infected corpse can explode, infecting anybody in a 30-foot radius. If infected, you can try to sever the infected area and burn the appendage. Otherwise, at the moment, there is no cure. If severing appendage is not possible, lock yourself up until military personnel can reach you. Your safety is important to us. Your safety is important to us? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one before. Try as you might, you can't keep me safe from myself. Real quick, if you didn't watch my first coverage on the Itch Files, as well as the original media, you should go watch them or else you'll probably be confused. If you're not going to do that because you suck, here's a real quick rundown on the first coverage. A seemingly anomalous disease infected a patient zero by the name of Scott Griffin after he touched a milky white discharge that came out of an unknown sea animal. He says he touched the cum by accident, I'm not so sure. Anyways, this disease causes incredible skin irritation and a rash that results in hives and cysts. The itching from this condition gets so severe that people often react violently and for unknown reasons murder those around them and pour the blood in the open wounds that they've grown to quote unquote feed them. After feeding these sores, they receive a euphoria unlike any other, and if the sores are not fed, the patient becomes increasingly erratic for fear that they will not live. This mental state could possibly be a form of mind control inflicted by the disease. Also then Scott exploded, but not before infecting a bunch of other people, and then they all lived happily ever after. Got it? Good! In this tape, a few more key pieces of information come to light. For instance, we learned that the dead are infectious. I I know it'll be difficult considering you watch this show, but everyone try not to get cummed on by a dead person for a little while. Likely, the explosion we witnessed in Scott's case is the pathogen's last-ditch attempt to infect others by spreading infectious carrion as far as it can go via explosion. Like blowing on a dandelion so it pollinates, or dynamiting a whale to clear the beach and also so it rains delicious endangered rotten beluga blubber. We also learn that if infected, one can amputate the infected area and attempts to save themselves. Look, I get it, we may know why my crotch is itchy now. But if that's the case, do me a favor and just have the military go ahead and kill me. This amputation method is significant because prior to this, touching the white goo that isn't cum but a different white goo was a death sentence. The authorities seem to be taking this outbreak quite seriously, as having entire body herpes is now how you get yourself a shoot on site order. A pointer, if you're gonna execute someone on site, is there really purpose to telling them that? I feel like if they know, they're gonna try to avoid it. But hey, you don't tell me how to make my videos, I'm not gonna tell you how to execute your citizens. My advice if you get itchy hole disease, don't lock yourself in the closet and go ahead and feed the holes. I say this because I'm curious about one aspect of this story that is yet unanswered. What happens if someone successfully feeds the holes on their body for a long period of time? Does the disease progress? Do they get more powerful? Maybe it becomes some sort of super mutant itch. I have no idea, but I've been talking about this too long, so we're gonna go on to the next tape. The following is Melissa Bates' first-hand account of her encounter with Mr. Griffin. St. Roche Quarantine File 5, St. Roche Hospital, Infectious Disease Ward, January 8th, 1998. Patient, Melissa Bates. I could tell Mr. Griffin was sick from the moment he stumbled into the gas station. I thought he might have been having a heart attack when he collapsed to the floor. 
I had to go help him. You know, the right thing. I didn't even notice the bumps until I was helping him to his feet. The poor man looked like he was in pain. His skin was so hot. It was like he walked out of an oven. And that's when I heard something pop. I could feel something wet in my hand. At first, I thought it was blood, but it was too gritty to be blood. It was wet, but it was rough, like sand. And it was white and yellow, like snot. Before I could even look at what it was, I heard more pops. Every one of them just exploded. More of whatever it was got on me, and everyone else in the store. It was shooting out of him like bullets. It was disgusting. And after that, Mr. Griffin snapped too. He rushed out of the place like a bat out of hell, almost like nothing had happened. I went to the bathroom and washed that nasty gunk off my hand. Then I thought nothing of it until I got home. That's when I found my hand covered in hives. Later that night, it was all over my body. I started to itch. Bad. My entire body felt like it was covered in acid, but worse. I tried to take a shower and rubbed every lotion I could find on my skin. Nothing worked. Chris. Oh God. Poor Chris. He was my boyfriend. He asked me if I was okay. He was just trying to be sweet, but for some reason, I grabbed a knife. The next thing I remember, I was rubbing his blood all over my body. I was feeding them. The holes. The things inside of them. And I need to keep feeding them too. If I don't, I think I'm gonna die. Can you help me? Please. Melissa Bates passed away two days later. For more information on the patients exposed to the Omega Helmets at the St. Roche gas station, please visit subsequent files. <laughs> she looks like Swiss cheese. Well, Melissa Bates bit the dust, but it didn't specify whether or not she exploded. I hope she did, because I think it'd be funny. Good rule of thumb, the right thing to do morally is typically the wrong thing to do survivally. It appears that this was among the first infected by our patient Zero. With Miss Bates' case, we understand notably more about this disease. First and foremost, we get confirmation that these sores can manipulate the mental state of the individuals and cause some sort of amnesia during the violent incidents. Not only that, but we get a major clue in what's causing this disease. Melissa claimed that the fluid felt grainy, almost as if there were little balls in there that she could feel in between her fingers. She also claimed that there was something inside the holes, and I think the nodules in the cum are the eggs of whatever the something inside those holes are. The name of this disease, Omega Helminths, which I was mispronouncing by the way, Omega, for the final letter of the Greek alphabet, sometimes used to represent the end of something, or infinity, and Helminth, aka parasitic worms. This name likely signifies that there are worms inside of the holes of the skin. These parasites are likely the cause of the rash and mental manipulation. I wonder if there are any other parasitic worms we know of. Maybe, oh I don't know, from the same creator and in the same analog horror universe? I think that these skin worms could be tangentially related to the tangy worms. See what I did there? Yes you do, you little shit! In this world, it seems that there may be an evolutionary tree of life of mind-controlling brain worms. It appears that this family of parasites has much more than one branch. Oh, they can have a friend! Only time will tell what this means for the world, but more importantly, the greater Louisiana area. If you like this video and want us to come back and check out the rest of this fantastic analog horror series, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll give you the itch with my cum. Make sure to go check out Vintage 8 and see the original videos, as well as some other great analog horrors. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Oh,